very good evening uh, to all the brothers in Christ. So, we thank our Lord for giving uh, yet another day to understand uh, these wonderful words of life. So last week, uh, we studied a very important class. Uh, you see, so today, we are going to see yet another, uh, you see, class uh, from the Bible. You see, uh, see what does the Bible say? Uh, you see, last week we studied of the seed of the woman. So, who is the seed of the woman? We traced. We saw that it is not only Jesus Christ, it is a church head and the body. So, all together are called uh, the seed of the woman. And once the church is complete, very shortly, the God of peace uh, shall crush uh, Satan under uh, its head. So today, we are going to see uh, what is the meaning of gospel, you see. So what is the uh, gospel mean? Because everybody has a common belief uh, that the good tidings, the gospel was uh, began to be preached since the birth of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So once our Lord was born, that is the time the gospel was began to be preached and proclaimed. Hence, uh, you see, uh, why they come to this conclusion is that the angels, when Jesus was born, they said, uh, you see, fear not, uh, behold, we bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The good tidings, the gospel, which is a great joy, it all began with the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reason we see that the first four books of the New Testament are called the Gospel according to Matthew, Gospel according to Mark, Gospel according to Luke and Gospel according to John. Because these four Gospels are completely about our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, we see that today the Good News Bible or the Gospel Bible is separately printed with only the New Testament in it. Because the belief is that, uh, you see, the gospel all began to be preached only after Lord Jesus Christ. Then, what about the Old Testament? Is there no gospel in the Old Testament, dear brethren? So, then why did God give the Old Testament to us? Was there no gospel before Jesus Christ came to this earth? Was there no gospel in the Old Testament? Dear brethren, what if I say that uh, the gospel was actually originally preached to Abraham? Would somebody believe it? You would all wonder, was it really preached to Abraham? Let us read Galatians 3.8. Can somebody read Galatians 3.8? In the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen to faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Very good. Very good, very good. See, huh? the scriptures foreseeing uh, that God would justify the heathen, the Gentiles through faith, uh, preached uh, before the gospel unto Abraham. See, the gospel was preached uh, to Abraham, uh, dear brethren. You see, huh? So, gospel was originally preached to whom? Abraham. You might all wonder, oh, brother, oh, yeah, Abraham was preached. Uh, gospel. Uh, the, what is the meaning of the gospel? You see, dear brethren, to understand uh, what actually God preached to Abraham. So, what is the definition of gospel? We should go back to the Old Testament where Abraham was promised. Uh, you see, but here in this verse also it gives a clue saying, in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That was the gospel that was preached to Abraham. And that is clearly given to us in the Old Testament, Genesis 22nd chapter, verses 16 to 18. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Genesis 22, 16 to 18? And said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, 
For because thou hast done this thing and hast not withdrawn thy son, withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Very good, brother. Thank you. So it says, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Dear brethren, if you observe this verse, it doesn't say that uh, only a few people uh, will be blessed in Abraham. It doesn't say that uh, only selected people will be blessed in Abraham. So, it says, in Abraham, all the nations of this world uh, shall be blessed. So, everybody shall be blessed in the seed of Abraham. Okay. But uh, today, you see, you see, not all are blessed. Does this verse say that only a few people will be blessed and rest of the people will be condemned to hell? No. God didn't even say that one also. And moreover, God took a oath upon himself regarding this promise saying, I take a oath upon myself. I have sworn upon myself that in thy seed shall all the nations of the world be blessed. Dear brethren, so if God has taken a oath, do we see really that the world is blessed? No. Many people during the days of Abraham themselves were not blessed. Abraham himself had 318 bodyguards, servants born in his house. You see, we have uh, seen uh, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, you see, by God's angels during the days of Abraham. They were not blessed, dear brethren. You see, they were never blessed uh, during the days of uh, Abraham. Even today, so many people are dying in war, pandemic, various types of, uh, you see, disasters. When will God uh, bless everybody? Did God tell a lie that uh, he told, I'll bless everybody and he's going to only bless only a few people, just a few percentage? The Bible says that uh, two things are impossible from God. Which are the two things if you see? One thing is that God cannot lie and he cannot break a promise. These are the two things which God cannot do. Read Psalms 89, 34 and 35. Emmanuel Buddha, can you read Psalms 89, 34 and 35? Psalms 89, 34 and 35. Emmanuel Buddha, you are there? Okay. Abhishek brother. Ah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Abhishek brother, can you read? Okay. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I shown by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. See, I will not lie. The covenant I will not break. The promise which God has made, He will not break, and He cannot tell a lie. These are the two things man, that uh, God cannot do. You see, then that clearly means that God is uh, having a plan. You see, that means, dear brethren, what is the plan of God? When Bible says that He is going to bless everybody, but here if you see, it's not bless everybody. It means surely that God has made a plan. Now, what is the plan? You see, what is the plan of God? That is given to us in First Timothy, second chapter, three to six. Okay, Stephen, brother, can you read First Timothy, second chapter, three to six? First Timothy two, three to six. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony that was given 
at just the right time. Very good. See, this is the will of God. But he wants all men to be saved. See, same thing which God promised Abraham. All will be blessed and come to the knowledge of truth. Dear brethren, this verse doesn't say, first you come to the knowledge of truth, then you shall be saved. Today, whenever we witness to everybody, a non-believer, how do we say? We say, first believe in Christ, you shall be saved. But what does the Bible say? Bible says, first you will be saved, then you shall come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Bible says like this one, because God knows the whole world are condemned to death. They are all dying. First, they need to be saved from death. Then only they can be given the knowledge of truth. That's the reason the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, that my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways, dear brethren. So God's ways is totally different than what man thinks. Therefore, that was First Timothy 2, chapter 3 to 6, it also says, how God has planned it and through whom he has planned it, if you see, he has planned it through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Bible says, you see, that uh, there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. So, through Jesus, God has made a plan. Therefore, we see in the Bible that Jesus is called as what? He is called as the world savior. Read John 4.42. Abhishek Buddha, can you read John 4.42? Okay, I'll read. And said unto the woman, Now we live, not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. This is Christ, the Savior of the whole world. You see, so Jesus is savior not only of Christians, but of the entire world. Let it be of any religion, any faith. You see, there are other verses also in First John 2, 2, it says, Jesus is the propitiation not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. He did not die only for Christians. There were no Christians when he died. He died for the entire world. In First Timothy 4, 10, it says, uh, you see, huh? that uh, Jesus is the savior of all men, Especially of those uh, that believe. Let us read this verse. First Timothy 4.10. Stephen, brother, can you read First Timothy 4.10, brother? And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. Next verse, brother. Mm. For... Therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. You see, he yeah, is a special Savior. Yeah, you see, he's a Savior of all men, but especially of those that believe. That means, this verse gives us an idea that he saves everybody, but especially people who now believe. That means we can see very clearly that through Jesus, the whole world will be saved. But not uh, all at a time. Especially some people will be saved, it seems. That means especially some people will go to the heavenly salvation. But rest of the people, they also will be saved. But that doesn't say that uh, they all be taken to heaven. So through Jesus, there are two salvations. Heavenly and earthly salvation. Remember, you see what the God promised to Abraham. In thy seed, I shall bless all the nations of this world. But how? I will make them as the stars of the sky and sand of the seashore. That means the heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. The stars of the sky represents the, you see, heavenly salvation. The sand of the seashore represents the earthly salvation. There are two salvations through Abraham. Okay. If there are two salvations, one heavenly and earthly, all the people are dead and gone. They are buried. They are all in the grave. So, what about them? That means the resurrection also should happen. 
And that also should have two parts. One, a resurrection for the heavenly part. The other, a resurrection for the earthly part. Does the Bible say so? Yes. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15, 21, 22, 23. Abhishek Brother, please read. I don't have English Bible now. I'm I'm in not in home. I'm uh -huh. far away from home. Okay. Uh, Stephen brother or brother Ashish, can somebody read with your Bible open? Twenty-one to twenty-three. Hmm. For since death came through a man. The resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Mm. Christ the first fruits, mm. and then at his coming, those who belong to him. See, everybody will be resurrected in Adam, it seems. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. But how? Every man in his own order. Not that everybody will come once for all. Everybody will come in order, it seems to you. Now, what is that order? The order, the Bible says, Christ the first fruits. Who is Christ? Last week we saw the head and the body. The church along with Jesus Christ. These are the first fruits who will be resurrected for the first resurrection for the heavenly part. But what about the rest of mankind? In verse 23 it says, They that are Christ at his coming, at the second coming of Jesus, the whole world, you see, will also be resurrected. So, two resurrections. One, a heavenly resurrection. Other, a earthly resurrection. Let us read one more verse. First Thessalonians 4, 14 and 16. Uh, Stephen, mother, can you read this verse also? First Thessalonians 4, 14 and 16. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we also believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Mm. See? By the word uh, of the Lord, we declare to you that those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. Ah. After that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord. See, this verse says the sleeping in Jesus 14th verse, it says, they are the sleep in Jesus. But verse 16, it says, the dead in Christ. The whole world are sleeping in Jesus with the hope of the resurrection. But the church are dead in Christ. So two salvations, two resurrections. Dear brethren, so the church who are dying in Christ, who are proving their faithfulness, to God until the death, they will be resurrected in the heavenly salvation. Therefore, you see, eh? the Bible says uh, eh? that uh, for uh, Christians, uh, what does the Bible say? Eh? Keep your eyesight on heaven words. Uh, read Colossians 3rd chapter 1, 2 and 3. Uh, Abhishek Mother, can you read Colossians 3rd chapter 1, 2 and 3? Colossians. Ah, third chapter 1, 2, and 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid 
with Christ in God. See, for you are dead. These are the dead in Christ, the Christians. Are. Now, what did God promise to them? Set your affections on things above, not on earthly things. Sir. You see, set your affections where? Heavenly things, dear brethren. So, these are the dead Christians to the world. They will be resurrected in a spiritual body. Why? Because we can't go to heaven in this earthly body. The Bible says, no, flesh and blood cannot inherit kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. And how do we go to heaven? We need a spiritual body. Not that we can go in the same body. Read 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 brother, and 40. 40 and 44. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read uh, verse 40 and 44? Forty and forty-four. Hmm. There are also heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is of one degree, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is of another. Forty-four. Hmm. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Mm. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. See? Oh, yeah. Earthly body is there, natural body is there, spiritual body is also there. So now we are sown in natural body. But when resurrected, the faithful church is resurrected in a spiritual body. How will the spiritual body be? How will the people who go to the heavenly salvation, in what body? And how do we look at? Uh, the Bible gives us a clue. The Bible says... Uh, you say that we shall be like Jesus. How? Let us see. For John 3 2. For John 3 2, Buddha. Who can read it? Yeah. Hmm. Yes, 1 John 3, 2. Hmm. Beloved, we are now children of God, and what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when Christ appears, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Hmm. You see, we don't know how we shall be, but we shall be like him. Now what Jesus saw? Remember, huh? Saul, Apostle Paul who became... You see, he was Saul, no? On the way to Damascus, what happened? Jesus appeared to him. He was brighter than sun at the noonday. His eyes got blinded. And this is the brightness of the spiritual body. This spiritual body will be given to the church if they are faithful. And what will the church do with this body? They will be with our Lord and rule with him for a thousand years from the spiritual, you see, heaven, from the atmosphere of this earth you see from the sky from the invisible heaven they shall rule over this earth Revelation 20 verse 6 Abhishek brother can you read Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 okay I'll read blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power but they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Very good. They shall rule with him for a thousand years. You see, the first resurrection. You see, on them there is no second death power at all. So these will rule with Christ for a thousand years with the spiritual body. Okay. So this is about the resurrection of the church, those who go to the heavenly salvation. Okay. Now, what about the world? Those who come for the world, how will they be resurrected? You see, the brethren, they will be resurrected as they died. You see, not that uh, after, as soon as the man dies, uh, judgment will happen, they will go to hell or heaven. No, you see, 
regarding judgment, we will see in the coming class. Uh, you see, dear brethren, this is not the picture of the judgment which the Bible says. Uh, you see, they will all be resurrected. Uh, huh? How? In the same earthly body, in the same earthly face, and Jesus will rule uh, over them for a period of thousand years. Uh, Therefore, in 2 Peter 3, 8, we see that uh, for Jesus, one day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. So as soon as Jesus returns to second coming, he will rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. And the first thing he's going to do is bind Satan for a period of thousand years. Read Revelation 20, verse 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Stephen, Stephen, brother, can you read? And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him, shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Ah, you see, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years are fulfilled. That means in the thousand years when Jesus is returned to rule on this earth, Satan will be born. Why? Because now he is the God of this world who's blinded everybody's eyes so they may not see the gospel. But in thousand years, the whole world has to listen to Krishna. If Satan is not born, how will the whole world listen? For this purpose, Satan will be bound. Dear brethren, see, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Why the people are not listening now? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Uh, can you read with it? Brother, can you read? Me? Uh. Ah, one minute. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Hmm. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. You see? They can't see. Why? Because the God of this world is blinded. So, when Jesus returns, he is going to bind Satan so that they may all learn to the truth, come to learn of truth. Therefore, you see, when Jesus is going to judge the world for a thousand years, Everybody will learn righteousness. Isaiah 26 9. Abhishek Brother, can you read Isaiah 26 9? Okay, I'll read. <clears throat> with my soul have I desired you in the night. With my spirit within me will I seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn. Righteousness. Ah, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness, dear brethren. You see, they will all come to the knowledge of truth. You see, dear brethren, the first thing is that all the dead people will come back alive. In the same earth, in the same body as they died. Read, you see, uh, Isaiah 26, 19. Stephen, brother, please read Isaiah 26, 19 and John 5, 28. 26, 9? 19. 19, I'm sorry. Hmm. Yes, Isaiah 26. 19. Your dead will live. Mm. Their bodies will rise. Mm. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for your dew is like the dew of the morning, mm. and the earth will bring forth her dead. See? The earth will bring forth her dead, brother. All the dead will come back alive on the same earth. John 5, 28 and 29, brother. 28. Mm. One minute. I'd like to search here. John 5, 28 and 29. Mm. Mm. John. Mm. Correct. Yes. Okay. John 5, 28 
John 5, 28. Do not be amazed at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the grave will hear his voice hmm. See? and come out. Uh, uh, all that are in the grave shall come out by hearing the voice of Jesus at the second coming day of the You see? Those who have done good uh, to the resurrection of life. Yes. And those who have done evil hmm. to the resurrection of judgment. Uh, everybody will come. You see? That's what the Bible says. You see? Because Jesus paid the ransom. Remember the class of ransom? Equal corresponding price. You see? The scale of justice, eye for eye. Uh -huh. Everybody will come. So in the thousand years, you know the speciality? Those people who have died, they will come back alive in the same nature. At the same age. Now, what is happening? As the days goes on, you see? Age is increasing 30, 40, 50, 60 then we go to the grave. But in Christ's kingdom, the age will run reverse order, dear brethren. It will go backwards. You see, the people who have died at the age of 60 years will come back alive, back to this earth at the age of 60 years. And their age will go backwards as they keep on proving faithfulness to God. You see, it will go back to 50, from 50 to 40, 40 to 30. 30, they will come and stop uh, day of the end. This is uh, the thing that is going to happen in Christ's kingdom when the whole world will be resurrected back uh, to life on this earth, uh, day of the end. See, it's given in Job 33.25. Read with us, Steve, from there, uh, Job 33.25. Job 33, hmm. 25. Yes. Then his flesh is refreshed like a child's. Hmm. He returns to the days of his youth. See? He shall return to the days of his youth. Days of his youth. Return. Youth means what? As per the Bible, it's the age of 30 years. Adam was created the age of 30 years. He shall return to the days of his youth. His flesh, how shall it be? Fresher than that of a child, it seems to be. The child's flesh is so soft. In Christ's kingdom, everybody will look so beautiful. You know, in Christ's kingdom, the only soap they will use is the Johnson & Johnson baby soap. Because everybody having a skin, and you see, the fresher than the child. Today, even after a lot of spending and witnessing activity, the whole world, and in India, you see, the whole world, only 33% are Christians. But in Christ's kingdom, when Satan is born, everybody's ears and eyes will be opened. Everybody will come to knowledge of truth. Read Isaiah 29, 24. Uh, Ashish Badar, you are there? Can you read Isaiah 29, 24? They also that heard in the spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn the truth. You see, they that erred in spirit, they shall come to understanding. They that murmured, you see, they'll come to doctrine, they shall understand. How? Because their eyes and ears will be open. Read verse 18 also, Abhishek And in that day, shall the deep hear the word of the Lord, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of the spirit and out of darkness. See, in that day, shall the deaf hear the Words of the book. Uh, who is the deaf? Even though they had ears, they could not hear the deaf and the blind. Those who had eyes but even then could not see. These are the blind. The deaf and the blind. You see, they shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So that is the time when their eyes and ears of understanding will be opened. Everybody will get converted towards the Lord. Everybody shall return to the Lord. Read Psalms 22-27. Abhishek, brother, can you read Psalms 22-27, brother? Okay, I'll read. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the 
kindreds of the nation shall worship before you. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn. You see, everybody tells no, oh, turn to the Lord, turn. So, see, they will remember and turn to the Lord. How shall they turn? They will, the world conversion will be so great and so wonderful. There is no need for one to go and teach to other people to know the Lord Jesus. Everybody will sure know the Lord Jesus. Jeremiah 31 34. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Jeremiah 31 34? 31, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them said the Lord for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more Ah, you see, everybody shall know the Lord from the least even to the greatest, it seems. Nobody shall go and tell to his neighbor, it seems. Such way, after Satan is born, everybody will be converted to truth. Okay, man will be converted. How about the animals? What will the animals do? You see, animals also will be converted. How? Read Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to 9. Isaiah 11, chapter 6 to 9. Uh, Abhishek brother, can you read Isaiah 11, 6 to 9? Can you read from the screen? Is it okay? Can I? Oh, Stephen brother, please. Isaiah 11, 6 to 9. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, oh. and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. How is it possible? You see, these were all in dreams of each and every children, isn't it? Didn't we all dream that, uh, oh, it would be so wonderful if the lion would come to our house instead of a teddy bear, a little bear would come, we would play. You see, every child has a dream. You see, that's going to happen in a thousand years. You see, as the stray dogs are roaming around in each and every place, in thousand years, all the wild animals will be on the road, dear brother, and there won't be any zoo at all. Zoo itself is not required. It says, ah, the wolf ah, shall dwell with the lamb. You know, the wolf, lamb means it's good meat. Ah, it's a biryani for the wolf. But in thousand years, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, it seems. The lion with the calf. You see, and who shall lead it? A small child shall lead it. That means in the thousand years, all the animals are going to be pure, vegetarian. That's what it says. The land shall eat straw like an ox. Remember, dear brethren, this is what we studied in the first world class. In the first world, all the animals were pure, vegetarian. Everything, the condition of the first world will be restored. You see, dear brethren, this is not going to happen in heaven. This is going to be in earth only. Because all the animals will go now. Heaven to eat straw. <laughs> it's going to be on earth only. Huh? Do animals have salvation? They couldn't go to heaven. Huh? Dear Buddha, this is going to happen in this earth. You see. Then continue Buddha. Next, what happened? Huh? Yes. The infant will play by the cobra's den and the toddler will reach into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and the sea is full of water. You see, they shall not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain. Mountain means what? Daniel 2nd chapter 44th verse, you remember the stone that came and hit the image? He began to grow into a big mountain, covered the earth, kingdom. So in all his holy kingdom, nobody shall hurt nor destroy. Why? Why? Because... The knowledge of the Lord shall fill the whole world as the waters cover the dear sea, dear brethren. So this is going to happen. The animal conversion. Okay. Now what about police station? Will there be police station in God's kingdom? You see? Will there be police station? Let us see. Will there be police station or not? Okay. 
Ashish Brother, can you read Isaiah 9 6? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his soldiers, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay. This verse we know actually speaks about Jesus. The government shall be upon his shoulder, is Himsa. You see, and he shall be called Prince of Peace. Not Prince of Pieces. Prince of Peace means there won't be any war at all, no, no fighting, no theft. So in Christ's kingdom, this police station also will be closed. Why? If there are robbery, if the robbers, then only a police station is required. But in Christ's kingdom, when everybody is having everything what they want, why will they go and steal? You see, today, we have so much war now. Above all, Yippa, Israel, Gaza war. Huh? Ukraine, Russia war going on for more than a year. Everything is gone. They become barbad. You see? But even then, fighting is not stopped. You see? But in Christ's kingdom, they won't be war at all. Read Isaiah 2.4. Abhishek brother, can you read Isaiah 2.4? Abhishek brother, you there? Can you read? Okay, I will read. Okay, Stephen brother, please. Then he will judge between the nations and arbitrate for many peoples. They will beat their souls into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer take up the sword against nation nor train any more for war. See? Yeah, what am I saying, sir? There shall be no war at all, it seems. They shall learn war anymore. Neither shall they learn war anymore. You know, the image what you see in the screen, it is an image that is put in the front of United Nations in America. They have made this uh, image based on this verse only. It says, they shall beat their swords into plowshares uh, and the spears into pruning hooks. That means, all the agriculture, you see, investment will be done. That means uh, the they shall beat the sword into pure pruning hooks. Means what all investment they are doing today for arms, ammunition will be diverted for agriculture. Imagine, dear brother, the cost of a scud missile is 10 lakhs. How much of scud missiles uh, you see are spent on a war in Israel Gaza war? Just in three hours' time, 5,000 scud missiles were launched. You see, imagine, 3,000 means what, dear brother? And so much of family could have been this is settled. You know, one fighter just cost more than 650 crores. You see, today, the defense budget is more than 15%. You see, and today we are living in a very small budget only for agriculture. Dear brother, in God's kingdom, an entire thing will be given and diverted towards agriculture. What beautiful things can be done, dear brethren. You see, this is also an image and the carvings upon the United Nations, the entrance of the United Nations. See, they shall beat their swords into pruning hooks, you see, and the spears into plowshares. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation anymore. They shall neither learn war anymore, dear brethren. So all the things which are diverted for, you see, arms and ammunition, will be diverted towards agriculture. What will happen to the whole world? Everybody will have abundance of food, dear brethren. Nobody will waste the food. See what the Bible says. Sir. Even they will grow in desert, it seems. A desert also shall flourish, you know, see, like a rose. Isaiah 35.1. Abhishek Buddha, you there? Isaiah 35.1. Can you read? Okay, Ashish brother, can you read Isaiah 35 1? The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as their rose. See, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. How can some desert rose grow? It will grow, it seems. You see, the Bible says, uh, How will the whole world be converted? It will be like a beautiful Eden garden. Read Ezekiel 36 35. Ezekiel 36.35. Ashish brother. Ezekiel 36.35 also. And they shall say this land, this land that was desolate is become like a garden of 
Eden and the way and developing green cities are become faint and are inhabited. See, this land which was waste to desolate is become the Garden of Eden. The whole world will be the Garden of Eden. You see, and Jesus will stop all warfare because he is the Prince of Peace. In Isaiah 2, 4, it says, uh, he shall judge among the nations. Uh, he shall rebuke many people. And uh, you see, he shall stop. He shall judge. Today, there is a lot of conflict between each and every nation. So all these cases will be solved. Okay. In Christ's kingdom, how about sickness uh, and disease? Huh? Will there be any sickness? Will there be any hospital? No, dear brother, there won't be any hospital at all. All the doctors will be given leave. Why? Because there won't be any sickness at all. Read Isaiah 33-24. Stephen, brother, can you read Isaiah 33-24? Uh, Stephen Miller, Isaiah 33-24. 33-24. Your ropes are slack. They can't secure the mast or spread the sail. No, Isaiah 33-24. Isaiah 33-24. 33-24. I'm sorry. And no resident of Zion shall say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven of iniquity. They will forgive and of iniquity. They shall not say, I am sick. No sickness, no doctor, no, no police, no military. Enjoyment. That means how much of lack of spend is going for a heart attack, dialysis, various types of diseases. All these things will be removed. Okay. Now if everybody come back to the world, back alive, will there be space? Now only no space. Everybody will tell, brother, now only no space, brother. We are all populated in the same area. China is overpopulated. <laughs> you see? Everybody thinks there is no space, uh, dear brethren. Let us think for a moment and just this is a solution. Just think it over. From Adam to second coming of Jesus, the Bible says it's a period of 6,000 years. We'll prove it from the Bible. Okay. Now, for every 100 years, there is four generations. Like uh, father, son, grandfather, grandson. Four generations are there. Okay. So, for 25 years, one generation. So, in 6,000 years, how many generations are there? It is 240 generations. Now, what is the current population of the current generation? It is 6 billion. So, let us assume that the entire 240 generations from the beginning of the creation of Adam till Jesus second coming had the same population, but actually did not have it. They were all less populated. Only Now, only it is densely populated. Let us assume that they were the same number of people who are living from the beginning till second coming of Jesus. That means 240 generations into 6 billion would give us 1,440 billion only. And this 1,440 billion, where can they be accommodated? If you see one square meter, you see one square meter, if you put a box, four people can nicely, comfortably stand. No need to worry at all. Four people, at least they can stand next to each other. You see, that means the entire populated world of 1,440 billion can stand next to each other. You know where? In Andhra. Just the place of Andhra itself is sufficient for the entire world population to stand there. Think about the whole world. When we are traveling, so many people, so many places... You see, they're vacant. Everything will be made fertile in Christ's kingdom, dear brethren. God never promised to Adam that uh, you overfill the earth. What did God say? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, fill the earth, not to overflow the earth. We simply think it's overpopulated. It's never overpopulated, dear brethren. You see, so actually, if you see, as per the calculation, each and every person, not family, each and every person will get one square acre of land minimum. Like it will be uh, named uh, on the name of every brother and sisters. You see, it will be a, uh, you see, Abhishek uh, layout, or it will be Emmanuel uh, <coughs> Nagar, or it will be uh, Stephen Square, you see, or Raj Enclave. This is how it's going to be, and only one person is going to live in that one square land. Uh, does the Bible say so? Yes. You see, the Bible says. That that each and every person will be living in a villa, own villa. 
रीड आइज सिक्सटी फाइव ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू अभिषेक बता यू देर कैन यू रीड यू हैव नेटवर्क ओके स्टीफन बदर हाँ ओके अभिषेक ओके आई रीड हाँ रीड अभिषेक बदर आई जे सिक्सटी फाइव ट्वेंटी वन एंड दे सेल बिल्ड हाउसेस एंड बैटिंग विद देम दे सेल प्लांट वाइनर्स एंड इट द फ्रूट ऑफ देम दे सेल नॉट बिल्ड एंड नॉन अदर इन हैबिटेड दे सेल नॉट प्लांट एंड नॉन अदर इश और एस द डेज ऑफ अ ट्री द डेज ऑफ Work of their hands. You see, they shall build their houses and inhabit them. They shall plant the vineyard and eat the fruit of them. You see, not uh, they build an another inhabit. No rented houses in thousand years. They shall dwell in their own houses. So everybody will be having a own villa, one square acre means what? Uh, then God is going to make a great feast, a feast of fat things for everybody. Blessings will flow to everybody. Isaiah twenty five six to nine, Stephen mother, please read Isaiah twenty five six to nine. Twenty five six to nine. On this mountain. The Lord of Hosts will prepare a banquet for all the peoples: of feast, of aged wine, of choice meat, of finely aged wine. On this mountain, He will swallow up the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove the disgrace of His people from the whole earth. Mm. For the Lord has spoken. Mm. Death itself will be removed. The veil of ignorance, Satan, what is put, it will be taken off. Continue with the next. Huh? And that day it will be said, surely this is our God. We have waited for Him, hmm. and He has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Hmm. Let us rejoice and be glad in this salvation, ah. for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Yes, but He's Moab done. will be trampled in His place as. Straw is trodden into the dung pile. Okay. He will spread so, out his hands within it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think we need it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you. Anyway, he says, then the people will acknowledge that he is our God. This is the true God. Therefore, Christ is going to return at the second coming and rule on this earth for a period of thousand years. So, in the thousand years, each and every man can will be brought back from the fallen condition to perfect. Uh, Adamic condition. That is the reason thousand years is given for Christ today. But then, uh, you see, then only the Lord's prayer. What is the Lord taught us? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. That will be fulfilled. Dear brethren. God's kingdom will come on earth. Then his will that is done as it is done in heaven shall be done on earth. Dear brethren. This is the gospel. This is what uh, God preached to Abraham, swearing upon himself, "I will surely bless everybody." Dear brethren, this is the gospel, entire Bible. Then why did the angels come and proclaim? Behold, we bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people, because for all these things to fulfill, Jesus was important to have come. It was very important for a Lord to come and die for us. That is the reason angels proclaim it on. That doesn't mean that only Jesus or only the New Testament is a, you see, gospel. Entire Bible is the gospel. And blessing, all world shall be blessed in Abraham's seed. Okay? Anybody has got any doubts? They can ask. Uh, Stephen, brother, any questions? Oh, no, thanks, brother. Thank you. Okay. Abhishek, brother, any questions? Okay, anybody? Emmanuel brother, Raj brother, any questions? You can ask. Uh, no, brother. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Okay.